Good evening. Welcome to Reloved Guitars in the new Bright Workshop space. And it's the new year, so welcome to 2021. Enough said about the old year. Um, anyway, first setup of the new year. Well, first customer setup of the new year. We have um, Rob's Telecaster. And um, let me just, oh, I just want to check something. Hold on, I'll start this again. <laughs> Good evening. So Friday evening in the Reloved Guitars newish workshop. This is the first customer setup of the new year. And uh, it's a funny old time because due to COVID-19, due to Brexit, all those unmentionable things, um, and due to the fact it's been very quiet through December, uh, I, which was good for me because I, we had Claire's health stuff to take care of and also getting set up in here, moving from the shed to this place. Um, so it really worked out just fine. But in the back of my mind, I was kind of nervous about, you know, oh, is there going to be any business coming through? Um, and we got into the new year and I sort of panicked for about 36 hours. And then uh, suddenly um, I seem to have got a booked up to-do list, which is great. So thank you for those of you who've, who've come in this new year with uh, guitars to set up. I really appreciate that. And um, hoping that 2021 is going to be a great year. Uh, although the numbers on the virus thing aren't looking great at the moment over here in the UK. So uh, I guess it won't be too contentious to say, take care whatever way that means to you um, without getting into discussions about different points of view. Uh, on government's response to stuff like that. Anyway, that's that's for another time. But, uh, <laughs> well, you know, one of the reasons that I don't talk about those kinds of things too much is because, partly because um, YouTube's got very itchy or jumpy about uh, the things it will allow you to talk about and whether or not it will consider your videos acceptable for advertising. So if you want advertising revenue, you can't talk about anything or it considers contentious so uh, I've been sort of careful about that but since I've gone in and taken off all the or most of the advertising off my um, videos not all of it just the most of the advertising the excessive advertising that YouTube added on um, a few months ago decided to blanket default switch everything on I think I've gone through every one of my 750 or more videos and switched off all the mid-roll adverts and all the um, unskippable ads. And as a result of that, my <laughs> revenue has gone. But that's fine. I don't want this to be uh, an unwatchable experience. I mean, it can be un unwatchable if you don't like the length of time or you don't like me or whatever. But I don't want it to be unwatchable due to um, just because of the number of ads that are stuffed in there by a, a YouTube that's trying to force us all to go to the uh, paid subscription model. Anyway, so, but the point about it is, is that actually there'll come a point where I'll tell YouTube this, when when, when my ad revenue d dips below $100 a month, uh, then I'm going to, it can go to hell and I'll just talk about whatever I like in videos and call it quits. Um, but there you go, that's my promise to YouTube if it carries on like this, the way it's going. Um, right, so we have the first setup of the new year and it is a player series Telecaster from Fender and this one is a... Uh, a Mexican made, it's very shiny as you can see, it's probably bouncing light off here like nobody's business. Mexican made, um, straight from uh, the retailer that here for a setup. Um, I'm going to take some close up photos of this. Um, I would have done, yes, I'm going to do it. I'm going to get the other camera. And I'll tell you why. Um, partly because, uh, when, where is the camera? <laughs> He's lost track of the camera. Did I take it home? No. I have it stolen, possibly. No, it's down here. Um, the reason I, I'm going to take pictures, he said, having left the camera on all night, thankfully it will have gone on to auto off. The battery's kind of 46. Okay. Yeah, the reason I'm taking pictures is when a guitar comes through to me from the retailer um, and the customer has never seen it before, there is a risk that um, if there is any damage done by the retailer, obviously I have to spot it and report it to the customer. But um, if I if I don't see something, or if it you know the, even if I spot something, it there is a an outside chance that it can 
and I hope it never does become, it hasn't yet, but there's a tiny risk that it can become me versus my word versus the retailer's word. And I won't say which the retailer is, and I don't think there's any sign of it. But so for example, you know, this is in pretty good nick. I can't see any obvious um, faults or anything like that. But for example, uh, there are some strange marks here on the fingerboard um, from the fritting process. And I can't quite figure out what would have made them. They're sort of slanted crush lines. It's as if, uh, I don't know really, I don't know quite what it is. Maybe it's a, a glue overspill or something. But anyway, then you know, I've noticed them and it's something that makes me think, okay, I'll, I'll take some pictures just so I can point these out. And, and so we don't ever get into a situation where, you know, it's my word against those, because that'd be a horrible situation. And, and it's always, the risk of that happening is, is increased by the customer never having seen this guitar before. So it, it, I think it's in both of our uh, interests to get, get some pictures of anything that I notice straight away so that if it's, if it's particularly, particularly odd, um, I can go, we can go straight back to the, if necessary, to the retailer and say, what is this and what should we do? Oh, no card. Where is the card? Is it in my pocket? Be very kind of you to tell me where I put it. Yeah. Oh, uh, I thought I brought it with me. Hold on. Temporary pause. Uh, I'm sure I did bring it with me. So why isn't it here? I had a card. I had one thing. I had another thing. And I brought all those things here. What did I bring? I brought. This little wiring thing, which is over there. The card for that which is there. Okay, I'm just gonna have to go and look a second. Just bear with me, I'll edit this out. Of course I will. Where's the card for the blasted thing? Where have I gone? Here it is. Yadaft, Egypt. Right. In my pocket, as intended, as planned. Right, back in. Yeah, so anyway. Always a good idea. Um, this isn't the best close-up camera I've ever seen, but I'm trying to get a good look at whatever this strikes me as. Can you see focus, please? I'm hoping that I'll be able to zoom in. I'm trying to get the sort of light reflecting as I see it. There we go. Oh, thanks. Slow. Yeah, nothing. I mean, it's not bad. It's just an interesting little mark. And it's the same on all the frets, a oh, bunch of frets down this side. Now my detective mind, it's not on the fret, sorry, it's on the rosewood or the power ferro, which is this, or Jatoba, I can't tell which this is. But it didn't look. Um, okay, so we've got, we've got a brand new guitar, very common. We've got uh, a nicely fitted nut, got full thickness body, we've got very twangy tone. I've had a, a check through play of it and we've got a very shiny um, finish and we've got nice fender tuners with a lovely satin finished neck. I don't know how well you can see that but it's a, it's a lovely finished, a lovely feel to the neck. Um, the frets felt to me when I was playing them felt just a little bit sharp and, and I can see that they've been beveled and nothing's been done to the edges of them. So they've left them looking very, very clean cut, which is a, you know, a nice aesthetic thing to do. Um, but it means that you, as a feel, you get a very sharp, uh, you get quite a potentially sharp feel from it. So we, I'll, I'll aim to sort of just round those off a little bit, or just, just soften those off. Um, so I pl had a play of this and it's got quite a high first fret action at the moment. And, um, We had some sort of slight buzzing going on. I'm sorry about the view, it's not the best. Um, yeah, it it's could be improved. Um, and the frets down this end, they're, they're, not, they're not tarnished or anything, but they, you know, it's kind of been a while since it came out of the fa factory. What's this backlight nonsense, what's going on? Um, thanks. That's just what I wanted. 
series of pictures. You can tell I haven't read the manual for this camera. Okay, so uh, yeah, a little bit sharp. Um, otherwise, it's that nice tone, a little bit of buzzing, um, high, slightly high first fret action. Um, I think a, a tusk style nut down here. Now, I've got a, we, we agreed on um, replacing the nut with a, with a tusk adjustable nut um, for maximum uh, tuning stability. And, and I'm gonna have a good look at this to see uh, whether it's something that's worth doing or not. Now, the reason for that is if the nut has adjustability built into it, i.e. there's room for me to get it to the right action, and if it is the right material, i.e. a new bone or a tusk that works and keeps the tuning stability, I think it would be, uh, I would rather not fix something that isn't broke. Right? That's my kind of thing, particularly when to do so would mean to break this little finished seal. Now we can do it and we can, see that it's hardly finished actually, it's a very, it's very satiny, so it's not, that's not too much of a, a big issue. But, you know, taking nuts out of guitars is always a, um, not risky exactly, but there's always potential for some damage. If it, if it looks like it will come out really cleanly and there's absolutely, you know, no worries at all, I'll go ahead and do it because that's what we aim for. And I do, I do have a, a, a strong feeling for Tusk as a good material to use. My slight nervousness would be just looking at this nut here but I think the we've got a 3.3 thickness here okay and that's that's exactly three so we've got a bit of that's I thought I thought they were I thought this one was just slightly thinner to begin with but it's not so we're okay so it would have to reduce that one now the other limitation on this I think which is a shame for these Mexican um, guitars is they fit this string tree, the butterfly metal string tree thing. And the, and it also they do it by whamming down the um, the angle there, right? So that the E and the B are massively uh, compressed downwards. Uh, whereas the, the, the G has got barely any break angle. Also, in playing this, I noticed that some weird things happen. I don't think this nut is as good as it looks, right? And the reason I say that is because when I played it, the, the E and the B are pretty good, but there was a, just a slight little bit of, um, I don't know, almost like a bit of a ring, overtone ring on them. But I think the, I think the slots are okay. But the G was a bit deader, and then when I pushed the G into the slot, it went completely dead. Now that shouldn't be the case if it's got the correct angled slot, and I don't think this G has. I think the G slot, I have a feeling it's almost flat, which is, um, it's, a, it, it's a problem, but also uh, it's not unfixable if we've got the room to take this one down anyway. So what I might do is I might start by adjusting this one as if we were keeping it in place, see how it plays. Uh, get a feel for it, and if it's absolutely spot on once I've adjusted it, then then maybe it doesn't make sense to make a, you know to take the nut out. And I will suggest that a better thing to do with this guitar would be to um, spend the difference on uh, string trees for here. Certainly replace the metal one down here with a tusk one. In fact, we got I've got several pairs of tusk ones up there, white ones. Um, and actually, if these, if these two, uh, well, I'm not sure if these two need them, but the, the break angle on this G is very, very, very slight. Um, it's, it's difficult to, to prove what it is, but if we put a blade, for example, on the string, it is, it is quite small. Okay, it's telling me it's about three, three or four degrees. Oh, I'll have to believe it. I think my problem with it is that it's the slot is flat and it's or it's in the slot is at the same angle as the string but not more it needs to be greater um, because the string has to come and launch off a pivot point at the front. You can probably see the board from here. Um, let me just see if you can through the through the square window. I'll do it right down here. Um, I think what may be happening is that the 
the, the G string. I can get these pens out of here. I think the G string might be running up the same angle and off the top like that. Um, if you can see it, yeah, you can just about see it in the corner. I'm not going to push the thing. So it's it's not got any single point uh, of what we call it, single point of, of fulcrum point. So what we really want is if the string's stuck in going in that angle, because we we really want the slot to be more like that, so that the string comes off, ideally off a point off the front with with a um, with as much force pressing it down on there or a reasonable amount of force pressing it down on there and um, the danger is if you if you do have it the way I drew it before if it does happen to be like that the danger is all it has to be is a tiny bit like that um, and what you get is the, the, the launch point of the string is somewhere back here on the slot and it's um, obviously not ideal and it you'll either get dead notes if it's dead flat or if it's backwards you'll get the note being extended to the back of the nut. So either way, the fact that when I press it down, it gets deader, kind of surprises me slightly. But love the tone from this guitar. Um, straight out of the shop, the tuners are right up on their, sorry, the saddles are right up on their stilts, which actually is probably Looking at this, it's probably close to where you want them because you don't want the, the grub screw sticking in your hands. But the other thing I noticed about this is when I played it, my fingers fell off the end really easily. Now it's not unworkably close to the edge, but in terms of balance down here, it's just slightly more generous in terms of room for the bass string, bassy, than it is for the treble. And I think that could probably, if possible, do with a very slight alteration and that is a very simple mechanical and crude process of slacking the neck screws off and just um, basically pulling the neck a little bit and tightening it back up when the neck is a little bit more aligned um, just so that it limits the amount of falling off now it just could it could a lot be to do with my technique which is not anything special at all so I'm not blaming the you know manufacturers or anything these guitars like this very often come especially bolt-on neck fenders, have a room for improvement of the angle of the, the neck alignment. And, and that's what that's what is you're intend, you know, you're supposed to do with a bolt-on neck. They're, they're that way so that you can adjust them. Um, yeah, so let's do a couple of measurements to see, broadly speaking, where we're at with the stock settings. warmed up here now just about thankfully um, and I'll make some notes of them so we will have a feeler gauge we'll have uh, a capo right let's start with the neck relief and let's make sure we've got reasonable size capo setting neck relief fairly large so I reckon that's probably about oh, I think I reckon more than 0.4 yeah it's about 0.5 two more than you need so I'll just jot it down here relief 0.5 mil I think 0.2 is a good start point um, some people you know if, if if you have a heavy playing style and you're you know you're a thrasher you know rick um rick parfit or you're you know the springsteen type of player then you know your whole action will probably benefit from greater space more space for the strings to spin so a little bit more relief and a higher action is going to be what you need if you're that kind of player and you use heavy gauge strings for big hitting hard hitting chords um 0.5 is top of the range that I would personally aim for. Um, now with this removed, let's just have a quick look at the default settings. I'm eyeballing the setting, the radius setting of the uh, saddles, which is pretty good. 
Um, what we've got down here was not bad actually, it was about 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, 
the biggest variable in the lot. So which is which one is the furthest out? And start by adjusting that. So I think it was in this case it was the neck relief. Um, so I've adjusted that first, and the aim here was to get that down to within a range that is more appropriate start point. Um, and I'm going for half of what it was. Still a bit above that, I would say. It's very difficult to measure it. Um, let's go to point four and see. Let's make sure we're below that. Yeah. So it's between. It's about point three at the moment, which, which is a bit more than I would start with. Let's do a tiny fraction more and then we'll stop. Some, there's all kinds of schools of thought on how long truss rod adjustments take to um, take effect. Um, I'm, I'm not a fan of the idea that it takes hours and people leave them overnight saying, oh, look, it's changed. I think they change, the neck changes due to climatic changes pretty quickly, though, if you take it inside um, you know, to a centrally heated place and it hasn't been in there, then you may find that it will change noticeably within, you know, half an hour, an hour as it warms up. But I'm going to sneeze. That's just about on the mark. Give us a way to sneeze. Oh, I'm not sneeze. Okay. So that's the relief set at 0.25, which is half what it was. Now, what we're getting here is fret slap, and it's down this end, which I would suggest tells us that the first fret action of 0.3 is too low for this guitar. I mean, occasionally you can get lucky and hit it. Ouch. Ouch. Proper. Now, this, <laughs> this is interesting. So now we have a relief set in a more normal range. What we're finding is quite a lot of nasty sounding notes. so nice and we're getting fret slap so there's a distinction between fret buzz which is t tends to be grouped in a particular area where you've got one or two high frets or a, usually quite often a, a small cluster of low frets which make the next series relatively high and high enough to get in the way of the, the string so that's not a, a very happy sounding thing so we're down to the right sort of relief um, and let's check the action again we're now we're down to about exactly on the mark on there and a little bit too high on this side. So I'm gonna um, tweak each one of these down. Let's see, will it work on a metric thing? Well, it will work on a metric thing for the saddles. Oh, that's strange. Now I can work it out. Okay, so I'm gonna take a tiny little downward jump on these. Now what I aim to do with all these setups is to go for the lowest action and make the, make the neck comply with that and I'm going to an action that it should not be out of the realms of possibility for a fret leveled electric guitar there's nothing about this that says you shouldn't be able to get close to that sort of action and of course if it doesn't suit your style of playing or the way you hit it then you can always raise it upwards a little bit from there that's always a given but we target is to aim for as low as possible and allow adjustment to that level. Any lower than that and you'll run into unleveled frets because we're only leveling for the action that we're aiming to get. And that, I, I wonder if this E is actually a little bit, no it's dead on 1.5, that, that would be where I was aiming for. Okay, so now we've got 
neck relief where I want it. We've got the end last right action where I want it. Lots of funny little harmonics going on there. I mean, it's not bad. The tellies, the tellies do a lot of weird stuff beyond the headstock, I've noticed in the past. Okay, so we now have the sort of target last fret action. Um, the radius of the strings looks good compared to the neck. Um, we've got uh, the, the amount of relief set that I think is about right. We'll check again. Yeah. And now we take another look at the last, uh, sorry, the first fret action. Um, and this time, since we have an option to change if we need to, I'm going to start with my lowest one and I'm going to get my trusty uh, widening tool. Now, you can do a number of things. You can be a purist and just use nothing but expensive nut files, um, which I've got several tired sets now. Uh, I've discovered in my time that they don't really work anywhere near as well as anyone wants them to. We like to believe they do because we just paid 100 quid for them or whatever the set costs. But in reality, let's, by the way, let's also get rid of this, change this over while we're in, in, the, in the game. Um, yeah, so I don't find they work anywhere near as well um, for, for a number of reasons. One is because they always bend um, and then by the time they're about a week old, you, you will end up putting bends into your... Uh, slots even though you can't see it and it, will, it means what happens is you end up creating wiggly slots which snaffles the clearance that you otherwise would have and uh, causes again, constrictions and friction constriction and friction baby now I'm going to put this back in but this time I'm not going to what's that sitting down there I'm not going to put such a huge downward pull on it it doesn't need it it just needs sufficient um, sufficient tension. Right, so now we've got st Tusk String Tree. Of course I will send this back with it, but along with anything else that we change over or whatever. So that's the first thing. Now, looking at these, we'll take another quick look. What I'll do, I'll work outwards from the G, in this case, to the E, and then I'll work outwards from the D to the E this side. So let's have a look at the... Now, this is now set a bit lower. So this G bothers me. So I'm going to do two things. I'm going to, first of all, just gently uh, open the slot up whilst pointing backwards. Now. If there's wood behind the nut, you've got to be careful not to cut a slot in that as well. But what I'm doing is I'm cutting backwards, but without cutting the front edge of the nut, because I don't want to take that any lower. It's as low as it needs to be in this case now. Having adjusted the other settings, now we're back to an, just about an acceptable action. It's also it's still a little bit higher than I'd go. So I'm just going to use that as an opportunity to widen this slot using my V file. So what we're doing in widening it is we're doing the heavy lifting, clearing out the nut um, slot, but we're also making it that, so that the nut opens up above the string and doesn't run the risk of, of constricting it and causing friction. Um, and, and in this case with the G that I'm concerned about, it's about making sure that it, it, uh, the slot runs backwards downhill we can't afford to have it um, flat. So I'm making sure, and if you're not sure about it, what you can do, if, it, if needs be, get a very sharp pencil and put a bit of the pencil lead, or if you've got graphite into this slot, you can clean it out later. Um, just kind of make sure some graphite goes right to the bottom of the slot, which I'm failing to do, because I haven't sharpened it quite enough. But if you can get right in there and put graphite at the bottom of the slot, um, it, it's really a help because you can watch your file and whichever file you use you can see it cutting the slot but not 
touching the front edge and that's the bit we want to avoid. So we want to make a backwards uh, leaning slot but we don't want to touch the front edge and lower that anymore. So I'm doing it using the uh, graphite as the guide and I'm going to stop when I've created the, the clearly backwards leaning slot. Um, See, it's not gone dead. See? If you rewind to the beginning, when I pressed that down before, that went dead when we pressed it down. And that's because the string was sitting on the slope like that, coming up to the top, um, and it needed to be like that over a fulcrum. Otherwise, it won't ring out properly. Yay! I like that. Right. And so, it would be a double bargain if we're down to the right height tiny bit more so we can afford to just keep an eye on that graphite again we've got a play off between the graphite and not hitting not hitting the wood the rosewood at the back that's as close as we're going to get good that sounds a much better note actually now we come back and we'll do the high of the B that's high and again, we'll do the same thing. We we'll, we'll might as well. It's a handy way of keeping track of what you're doing, especially when you, you've got a little bit to work with, but not a ton. So we're going to use the same approach here. And I'm going to balance just backwards so I can get a, keep that angle going backwards, clean the slot into a V and not hit the front edge because we're well, not yet. We want to take the front edge down a little tiny bit, um, but I don't want it to be extreme. I want to be under in control of it. Okay, now I'm going to lean the file a little bit forward to allow it to just remove a little bit of material. And I'm watching the graphite move so we know we've, we've taken it down a tiny bit. Now if you're in the mood, you can use your, your um, proper files here. Um, again, there. Depending on what this material is, they, those files relate differently to different materials and sometimes they don't seem to cut very well at all. Um, this is a quite a dependable cutter because it's diamond coated. So I'm going to line it up again. So the angle's now right. Now we just now need to let it cut the, the front edge a tiny bit just to reduce the height of the launch point on the front edge. Do a bit more to do. Sorry about this. The, if I had the um, if I had the uh, Sony camera up here, you'd, you'd see a better shot, but the picture and the sound aren't so good. So I'm just experimenting with doing different versions of this. I, I could try and fix it the Hawaii camera there. I haven't figured it out yet. You never know. This probably will be the year of some different cameras too. Okay, I'm happy with that. That's now a little bit lower than it was before. Um, dropped it a tiny bit and ensured that the slope is going backwards in the right amount. Again, I'm just going to chuck a load of graphite in here. So the nut is fundamentally important. This is not a bad material. They've obviously you know, taken time to put in the good quality, uh, whatever they call it, new bone or tusk, whichever proprietary thing they're using. But um, it's so critical to get them, for a, first of all, the right height and consistent across all of them. Sometimes people like a little bit higher at the base end. So it's coming, you know, instead of that, they like the height like that. Um, it's entirely people's choice. I, I find it worked pretty well all the way across the same. But, um, uh, but yeah, getting getting it to the right height is really important. And also, um, because if it's uh, what I found is if it's above 0.5, playing the notes down, pressing frets down or fretting notes down here, tends to go make them go sharp, which is a really hateful characteristic of far too many guitars that I've played 
Um, and it took me until I was in my 40s or something to work out what it was that caused that. Uh, and and fact, it found out that it was the nut, hence the, my sort of dedication to spending more time um, working on the nut, as it were, as much time as possible to get that absolutely right. And so what we're looking to do with the nut is to get the first fret action right on all these strings so that we are very safely clear of the zone where the notes would go sharp because we don't want to spoil our cowboy chords with uh, too high a first fret action. Like I said, anything above 0.5 uh, tends to run into that problem. Um, and then you want to make sure that the, the, the slots are free running um, so that you can tighten without any hint of pinging or dragging or, or, or friction. And to be honest, Tusk is a very good material for that. So I'm just going to get this set up first and I'm going to think about the, uh, the whether we keep this nut or not. If it comes out perfectly now, then it could be an argument for keeping it as is. Um, if not, then it could be an argument for replacing it with a, a t adjustable nut. And, and it may come down to, by the way, the fact that this has started out with too low an action on the high E. That may well be the, the, the deciding factor for me. Um, it's too low on the high E, causing that fret slap. But we shall see. Let's have a, a look. It's no big deal um, either way. I can use this setup right now to do the fret leveling and then we can come back afterwards and change the nut if we want to. So I'm using a 0.3 because that's the lowest of them all uh, on the low E if you remember. I'm just Just, just north of 0.3. That one's on the mark already. I'm not going to touch that one. Um, it was quite low anyway, on the 0.4. This is barely 0.3, so I'm going to not touch that one. Okay, so now with this nut, we've got everything to a consistent action. Um, not exactly in tune. We've got it to a consistent action. And we can use this setting right now for, for doing the fret leveling. Um, where is my... There it is. So now we know we are close to um, the sort of ideal oh, lowest possible action for a guitar like this. Lowest first fret action, lowest last fret, lowest last fret? Sounds like um, a character, superhero. Now, so what I'm going to do just now is I'm going to slack off the strings again for a minute. I'm going to make the neck alignment adjustment just before we go any further. I want to know whether we can do this and whether we'll We've got the space for it. I'm going to use my hopefully recharged screwdriver. Um, oh no. Thank you. One of those, one of those, one of those, one of those. Okay, so for this, we're going to um, release three of the neck bolts. And just tweak the fourth one like that. And then we we'll look back at our guitar and our spacing and see what's possible in terms of movement. It's actually quite a snug fit, um, but we really want a little bit more on 
uh, you, want, you want the neck basically to sit there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do up the, that side, do up this one and take a look at it. Okay, so we've now created a bit more space on the, let's just do this up a bit, a bit more space on the high E side, but possibly a fraction out still. So go back. Difficulty is there's not a, an awful lot of um, room available for adjustment in this. Okay, somewhere like that. So it's not that hard. You don't have to push too hard. Once you once you slack them all off, you can kind of move it around with a little thumb. Um, sometimes a little gap opens up there. If to get it exactly in place, you may even notice a tiny gap, which in this case probably might just fit piece of paper behind it. it's hardly any gap at all but it's just a little bit of movement away from where it was so that we can get an equal balance and now the, the art of this now would be to do these up in pairs actually you know what I should, no, I'll leave that do it up in pairs and then when you're done two check and and now we've now we've got uh, a pretty good and actually I'd say we're if anything, we're slightly got a fraction more on this side space, which is what you want. If, if anything, you want a tiny bit more real estate on the high E side, particularly if, if space is overall limited for the, you know, between the whole, the whole set of six. Um, if you are at risk of both sides being too close to the edge, kind of go go with a tiny bit more space for the high E. In fact, that's actually almost, no, it's about a quarter of a millimetre more on this side, but that's where we want. Give us a, a less chance of falling off the edge when playing, whereas before, it was, my fingers were pulling it. Now, for, for when we do uh, fret leveling, we also want to have the thing under strong tension anyway. Stretch. If you haven't um, watched any of my videos before, I'll reiterate here that one of the things I've learned is that the secret to stable tuning is 50% the nut Fifty percent the nut, and fifty percent um, how much unreleased slack is in your strings. So it's got nothing to do with your tuners, um, and that's it. So as long as you get your nut right, uh, and or you know, and you slack, you pull out all the slack from your new strings, and I mean all of it, not just what we think we should do, but it takes about 10, 15 minutes of hard stretching. Once you do that, and in combination with getting the nut right, you, your guitar will play and stay in tune for, for ages. It's quite amazing how well it will stay in tune. Um, if you don't get the slack stretched out of your strings, a bend or a tuning later on will put the guitar out of tune and you'll hate playing it. You noticed how, even though these are straight, well, these strings that are on the guitar, I pull this one. So there's still slack to be pulled out of all of these strings. And we have to do it before we play. If we don't, we'll pay for it. It's 
It's not actually bad. It's not. I thought that might be too low on the first fret. I'm prepared to live with it like it is for a minute. We've got a really nice low first fret action now on all the strings. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to prepare for fret leveling. So the first thing I'm going to do is mark up all the frets and uh, with the marker pen. And this will, not only will it give us the best possible level frets to start out with, it will also clean up any tarnished and tired looking frets that sat in a display cabinet or in a warehouse box, or a box in the warehouse, I should say, um, for months and months on end. So it's, it's a nice way of kind of freshening them up anyway, so we'll get them all clean and shiny. Um, and also, if this was a used guitar, it will also uh, help to remove any groove, wear grooves down here from the, the cowboy cords, as people call them. Um, which we obviously don't suffer from on this guitar. So I'm just um, carefully getting the marker pen on all of these prior to fret leveling. And uh, these are nice big medium jumbo frets. There's a lot of metal in them, so we're, we're not starting off with worn out frets or any risk of not having enough fret metal to do this with. The, the method I use I use it for one really one reason only um, it is theoretically it's slightly more accurate than the standard leveling beam method with the strings off and the neck flat um, it's slightly more accurate than that but the main reason I use it is because it's um it gets to where you want to get for the action you set <laughs> come here magnet uh, for the action you set and it does it without the minimum amount of fighting with my magnets, the minimum amount of fret metal loss. And that's that's really what the appeal of it is for me. Uh, because fret metal is the life of your guitar, basically. So, you know, you don't want to give away, you want level frets, but you don't want to give away any of the life of the guitar, or you want to give away as little of the life of the frets as possible. So here we go. I'm going to get my tried and tested method out and I'm going to get my adjuster. Oops, careless. I didn't grab it properly. Okay, so now I'm just looking to start off. And that's practically calibrated already. So I'm going to do the E track and I'm going to just gently spread out the strings. And it's as simple as running this 400 grit covered adjustable. Uh, leveling beam with the, the the neck rest is in the middle stopping the neck from bending too much and I'm just running this now up and down in what I call the E track and I'm just seeing uh, what frets it's cutting or touching and what frets it isn't and then I'll stop after a bit and what I can see is I get, take a diagnostic look from it and it tells me there's some low frets here and a low fret on the end but there's a little cluster of two three low frets which could be why we're having some some little buzzes there earlier on and we might find it tracks across to this side as well um nice thing about this method is once you've done a tiny bit of leveling to get your guitar into playing position again sorry the angle's not great but and then try your notes a tiny bit down there and I can see there's a high fret there and a low fret on the low frets on the other side so I'm going to go a little bit further with that and concentrate kind of down there if you like and just hold it hold it not a lot of force it's mostly gravity um, but we're right to the edge of the frets if we can and you'll see which ones it's cutting and which ones it's pretty much missing altogether. Now I'm coming down, it's just starting to cut on those low ones, which means I may have bottomed out that slight little way, little undulation in the fretboard there. Very small, you wouldn't be able to see it with your eyes, but the tool will pick it up. So all the notes on the E track play very nicely. We'll now calibrate again 
um, for the next one. It's in the same, I'm calibrating in the same place as before, but because I've used the tool, I'm just going to give it another check to make sure I've got it right. And actually, I could possibly use a tiny adjustment because I think it may have just unwound itself a tiny fraction like that. And that's too much. Is this the actual right key? Yes, it is. Okay. You get used to the, the experiential thing if you do this a lot. You get used to when you've got the right calibration. You can feel when all three points touch at the same time and you know you're on the right, got the right shape to your truss rod. So again, just correct where the neck support is. And I can definitely see the low frets showing up again. And there are two of them or three of them right here. So there's a little dip there. Um, and ideally, if we can afford to do it without costing too much material, we do want to tr possibly try and get get there so we bottom that bit out because we don't want a low spot. A low spot makes the next fret high, which will cause it to choke or buzz. So a low fret is, a, is your worst enemy. It's probably even harder to um, fix than a high fret. A high fret, you only have to bring that fret down relative to the others. A low fret, you have to take all the others down to the bottom of the low fret. That's good. Now, I'm gonna check. Now we're choking out, right, on the high E bends, for example, here, and I can hold my pick and see where that is, and it's to this side of the G. So very often when you have uneven frets, you're clearing them as you go this way um, and the impact of uneven frets really comes into play when you bend your E string across the track of the other strings. Um, you're also pushing the string uphill, which limits and reduces the clearance it's got naturally without there being high frets in the way. So very often on a fret leveling uh, expedition like this, the G track is critical, not not to whether all these individual notes will play well, because we've just proved they will with a little bit of leveling, but it's critical to freeing up the bends for a very low action that like we've set. Um, actually, I should have calibrated for the G track. I'm gonna do that again, because that's how I do it. So moving a track, recalibrate. At the same place where I put these little brass nuts each time. Okay, that's still calibrated, right? Um, now I'm going to level the G track. Now you heard that choking out before. This is the magic of it. If we can, this leveling of the G track now is what's going to clear those bends and stop them from choking. It will free them up if, if it's possible at all to do it. There are occasions when it's too low and you just can't do it, but where it is possible, this is where you'll hear the improvement. Okay, and I can see a couple of, um, you know, Frets being cut up here. It's not bad, but we'll now have a go at bending those high E's again and see if we choke out the same. Better, not quite there, but it is very low. So you have to keep in mind that we're going for the lowest possible action. I'm gonna give it one more go leveling on the G track. These are new frets. I don't wanna go for leveling for too long particularly if I'm chasing a very low initial action. That's kind of, it ends up being a bit gratuitous, you, you know, it's trying to prove a point for no good reason, but I'm gonna give it one more level in this track to ideally free up those high E bends. And then once I've done that, this time I'll move on to the next one. And potentially rather than level anymore in this G track, um, the, the way of freeing up those bends is to um, fractionally raise the action from 1.2 to 1.3, something like that. May not be necessary now if we try this. Okay, we're choked out right across there. Where is that? That's, that's practically in the A track, but we're also coming down the side of the hill. It 
better. Do a tiny bit more in the B and the G tracks on the same setting and then I'll move on. But it, it's, a, it's a very, 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 very subtle, tiny clearances we're talking about here. Now, for somebody starting doing this, one of the things that quite often happens is it can, it can feel really scary when you first uh, cut the tops of your frets and you can think, oh my God, this is, you know, this is, I've flattened the frets completely. You haven't very often. You can do if you keep on going, um, but it's quite, it's quite unusual to actually get to that point where you actually fret, flatten or do much damage to the frets with this 400 grit. It's very mild um, material. But I'm going to stop there because that's all I want to take. And I know that I can make a very small action adjustment if I want to clear the last bit. And we're talking tiny action adjustments, so small that you wouldn't feel it, but it would be enough to clear the that little tiny last bit of choke out. Now this is, this is, I can do a tiny adjustment here. And again, these are minuscule amounts of adjustment that I'm making. It's really hard to explain how small it is, but it is very small. And now we're going to do the D track part of which is the last bit of choke where we bent the high E string over the top of the hill down into, into the G track, which is when you think of the geometry involved, it's always going to be nigh on impossible unless you have very level frets. So if we can if we can clear the choking and we can actually bend a little bit over the top of the hill, it will be a sort of geometric miracle really. I wouldn't expect to be able to do it. But that's what you're up against. You're up against the, the basic geometry of pushing a string up a hill, but the string has to go back down to a lower anchor point at the at the start, which is um, it's unsurprising that you run out of clearance. Not bad, actually. I'm going to do the A and the E. Now, when we first played this guitar, or first sounded all the notes, they were sounding horrible down at the low strings after we set the relief flatter. But I think we're going to notice a real improvement with very little levelling necessary, but it will improve it massively. Now, that isn't playing the game. Not enough room to tuck that in that one, so we'll go and push it the other way to get it out of the way. Now this, um, I'm, I'm all the while I'm kind of thinking about this nut. It's a, it's a, it's a custom made nut. It's not uh, somebody when they've done this in the factory. It's not just a nut they've chucked in and stuck in place. They've, they've taken some time to hand adjust it, even if it's not as accurate as I would like. It's good actually, very good. Uh, it's not as good as I would like the nut, but they, it's, it's not just a factory built nut shoved on the end. They've cut it down and left it a little bit rough and crude, so it actually, they haven't even sloped the top of the nut backwards, they've kind of left it a bit flat which is fine, it's only a stylistic thing. Um, but once these strings are off, if we're going to keep that one on, then what I would suggest is we um, just uh, uh, file it a little bit more and polish it up a little bit. So it's, uh, it kind of looks like it's leaning back a little bit. Okay, so we're on the, the final low E track. Um, And often the edges can be a problem because it's very, it's quite common for the, the frets not to want to sit perfectly at the edges because where there's a mismatch between the fingerboard radius and the fret radius, as well as complicated by sometimes a mismatch with the fret insert, the, the fretting insert that you're using. There's three different things there at least that can be slightly out of sync with each other in terms of their shape. This is still a bit on the noisy side, and I'm just going to double check. It may be this is the 
the effects of the slightly too low low E action. Um, but no, it should still play a bit better than that. We've got enough relief, I would say. Let's see where it goes. Good, bad. Now, first of all, if you get that where it's got quite a lot of buzz in lots of different places, the indication could be that it's less to do with individual high frets, although there is clearly a difference. That clears quite well, whereas that one doesn't. So there's a, there's a combination of a little bit of high fret stuff going on there, but what I'm thinking is that this isn't doesn't leave uh, the action chosen for this doesn't leave this string enough room to spin. Now the only way to cure that is to increase the relief or slightly raise the string action. I'm just going to do one last little bit of leveling in here um, and then I'm going to look at it again and consider the action. Uh, a sort of two, two point, a 0.25 millimeter uh, neck relief should give you a clean playing uh, notes um, and it should be able to tolerate a fairly low action. Um, you see, there, there's a couple of there's an example here. There's a fret that's cut here, and the next two frets haven't touched at all. So there's clearly high fret there. There's no doubt about it. Um, the rest are cutting approximately the same way. So it's not a huge diversity of levelness. Okay, now watch this. If I make a quarter of a turn adjustment on this low E, okay. Like that, and try again. A bit better. Not ideal. check what we've got. We have got, I would say that's a fraction over 1.5, that's a fraction under 1.5. That's the, that looks a bit, that looks a bit odd, that's, hmm, thinks to himself, yeah, and what I haven't checked of course, uh, is what the actual radius is on this. Um, because if it's 9.5, which I can't remember whether it is or not, um, if it were 9.5, and I haven't got internet, so I can't do that. If it were 9.5, then, sorry, 7.25, then we would struggle to get that action out of it anyway. Let's just check. Okay. 1.75. is it. Let's tune it a minute. Um, yes, yeah, so that's interesting. Where's my note making thing gone? Here it is. It's going in place.
mighty low. I'm going to double check the relief, make sure it hasn't changed, increased or reduced any since I last checked it. Um, it may be that we'll set this to 0.3 as opposed to point. Let's see what we got going on there. very low fret here that's what the problem is the two last frets are very low so that's why making this this isn't when I press down on the last fret it nearly touching the one before that's because the last frets ultra low so let's go halfway and measure it let's not trust the last fret on this now let's go to the jo joint between the body and now we're looking actually very flat so that's a that's an interesting variation of how it appears. Let's just slack this a tiny bit now. To one side please. That will do. I always recommend to people when you get a guitar, if, even if you're new to it, um, adjust the truss rod. Make sure you know what it does. Um, you can't break it. You really, really have to swing on it with both feet to break it. Now that's right over the tone and a half. That's pushing it with these strings, that's pushing it over the other side of the hill. So that's a limitation that it's hard to overcome. Maybe I'm asking too much of it with the bends. Um, Okay, well, I'm, that's, a, that's lower than it was. Um, let's take it from there. Let's polish these out, clean everything up. I think we've got, um, we've got a little bit, tiny bit more relief in there than before. Um, especially if we measure it from a different spot and not take into account this flat one. So this low string, low fret. Um, yeah, I can see a little gap on the end here as well. So these, some of these aren't tiny bit eye on that one. That's my only concern really is this this nut slot 0.3 maybe a fraction too low because that's the only one that does that.
So there's the limitations, okay? If you're a heavy hitter, you have to raise the action a little bit higher than we've got it here. If you're not a heavy hitter, um, you, can, you can play gentler without getting fret buzz. And that's the limitation we're always up against. only concern is that low E height of the first fret. Now the beauty of the wherever I put it, the beauty of the adjustable nut is that we can adjust that in or out to suit. So I think we're gonna put the adjustable nut in. I, I would have had that not had that that little bit of buzz there I wouldn't have done it because it wouldn't have been worth it. But we do have it and it is worth it. So I'm going to do it. It's got to be as good as it can be. Um, bear in mind, remember, that this E, low E slot, I haven't touched. So this is how it came from the factory, and I would suggest it's a fraction too low. Sometimes I use a 0.3 at the last fret, uh, sorry, at the low E, but more, the, more and more these days, I will go between 0.3 and 0.4 because this is proven to be a little low for this guitar. Now, we've got the challenge of getting the original nut out. The fret leveling is, is done regardless of what we do with the nut now, and the nut isn't, uh, you know, the leveling isn't dependent on the which nut is in there, which nut. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a cloth and I'm just gonna clean up some of the dust off the finger bear, bear, finger bear at first. Right. Paper. Get rid of, some, rid of some of this dust, and then we'll get uh, we'll sort the, the nut out. It's just a matter of getting the original one out and off, off and out. Um, which, if it doesn't budge simply, and we can give it a couple of taps in different directions to try, um, then we cut the nut down the middle, down the center line, and kind of snap it out, fold it in on itself around the saw line. So it's pretty easy to do. Just, you just have to be careful. Um, so the first thing we do is just check again on the, the degree to which it's, it's pulled in. Um, if it's not got a, a lot of finish over it, it should come out pretty straight. Um, if it has got some finish on it, you can, you can't see me doing it now because I'm sort of hang, obscuring it, but you can use a blade to just mark the edge and push it very carefully with your thumb so you can score any finish and help it to part. On this side, it doesn't appear to be any finish enough. You won't get anything chipping off or, or anything like that. So let me get these springs out of the way. Um, and just take a little time because I want to straighten them out a little bit because they're useful as sacrificial strings for another setup. So it's always good. I've got a few hanging up there on attached to the magnets, as you can see. So uh, we use a pliers to straighten them out a little bit. Yeah, so uh, when the strings are off now, I should say, right now, I'll just check the... Um, radius of this as well. I forgot to look at that. With my fret leveling method um, the radius is not relevant in the sense that uh, the, the banana method that I use as I call it um, because it takes very small thin samples of a, any given radius in a longitudinal direction it doesn't uh, affect the radius it, it sort of respects it and follows it. it doesn't do it doesn't change it in any way when you level the way I've just done. If you were using a radius block to level with, then you would you definitely have to be cautious. And uh, if you had, a, for example, a compound radius, two you know different radius, changing radius along the length of the neck, you can't use a radius block to level because the radius block is a fixed radius and it will 
basically you'd end up imposing the fixed radius on what used to be a, a compound radius and it would sort of take quite a lot of fret metal away in, in imposing that new radius. Um, so that's another one of the reasons why I like the um, what I call the banana method because it really does I call it respecting the radius the compound radius that's there but it, it because it's such a small cross-section of the overall curve um, it, it doesn't see the difference between the curvature at this end and the curvature at that end although we know they're different um, when you're just taking a tiny little section to level um, it, uh, it, it doesn't, it doesn't present a problem that they overall they're two different radii. Um, it's maybe a bit hard to kind of explain that, but anyway, let's just get these out first and smash them away somewhere. And then we'll check the radius and we'll set about tapping the nut. Stay there. At the same time, I'm going to also do a little bit of fret work on the edges just to take the sharp bits off those faces if I can. Um, in a setup like this, when, when you do some fret work, you can then sort of soften the fret work up when we polish out the frets and sand them out anyway. So we've got a, we've got a whole series of a whole process of sanding to come and we can use the sandpaper to to soften up any edges but sometimes it may even be better to get a little file in and do that help it on its way um, radii let's see what we've got and sometimes you might find that the frets and the actual fingerboard say playing two different games but in this case it looks like it's a 9.25 and it looks fairly sorry 9.5 it looks to see yeah it looks I'd say it's consistent all the way down yeah 9.5 all the way down so 9.5 is it's you can't you won't get a 9.5 down below the 1.5 1 1.6 to 1.3 1.2 area you will get further than that on the 12 inch radii like SG's, Gibson's, you get a little bit lower, but Strats and Tellies, um, 9.5 and below start to present real problems. Okay, so let's just get out our files. And while we're at it, let's just do a quick filing thing. Now what we can do is we can use this one, which is a, an arch shaped file and we can just Use it to round off, very slightly round off the frets. The truth is, it, you know, it takes off the, what's otherwise a very sharp and snazzy look, um, you know, because it rounds them off very slightly. Um, but it's, it's about comfort. Uh, that sort of pretty geometric sharpness doesn't do your fingers any favours. So we're trying to just um, kind of ease that off here a little bit. And then after that, we'll, uh, we'll remember to sort of sand this out as part of the fret sanding process. Now, there's a couple of things we've yet to do. Um, turn this around for starters. Um, a couple of things to do. We've got to remove the nut, and we've also got to reprofile these frets, which means in leveling them, we've put a flat spot on them. Uh, of some degree or other and that will affect the, the way the notes play and it will also potentially affect the intonation of the strings so we want to tidy that flat spot up and reshape it into uh, an arch shape which is what the fret originally came with so we'll do we'll, we'll do that by recrowning the fret this is a bit like a crowning tool, but we're just using it to do the ends. Um, crowning tool now in a minute will run down and take the sharp edge of the flat spots off all of them and return them to a 
an arch shape but with, without taking any further height off them and that's the important bit we don't want to lower them anymore okay all right we'll, we'll come back to the fret ends in a minute what we'll do now while I'm in this mode is we'll recrown the, fi the files the frets um, we'll need the marker pen again which is here Interesting, this is shiny up here, like they've run it in the buffer or something. Um, no big deal. Okay, so we will mark all the frets once more, and this time we'll use the Stumac offset diamond fret crowning file. And uh, I think I'm going to use the jumbo side this because I think these are quite big these frets. We use the jumbo pile and we'll just use it to take off any edge that our flat spot has left. And the marker pen tells us when to stop using this. Um, as soon as we touch the marker pen it means we've done what we need to do. So the aim is to reshape the fret a little bit but leave the black line on the a line of black marker on the top of the fret to tell ourselves that we haven't lowered the fret in any way we've just reshaped the edges a little bit and the ones that have been uh, leveled most i.e usually the higher ones take a little bit longer to reshape because they've had a little bit more flattening done to them and often you'll find that to spend a little bit more time at the edges if they've if they're sticking up a tiny bit more. Let's see the speed I'm going through this tells you it's hardly any leveling. Even I've been very cautious, I think, <laughs> more than anything, because it's a brand new set of frets. Um, I, I, I'm very I'm, oh, I'm always overly cautious with fret leveling. Sometimes to a fault, um, sometimes I'll, I've given customers back guitars that if I had the courage I should, probably should have leveled a bit further with, but it's, uh, it's often a calculation about is there is what we've got here fret slap due to uh, needing a bit more relief in the neck or is it um, actual fret buzz and if you can, with time you can sort of start to tell the difference between the two because if it's if it's fret slap and not fret buzz then there is no real value in continuing leveling you can't you can't get rid of it because it's not caused by a single uneven fret getting in the way so it's a hiding to nothing in the true sense of it okay so those are now um thingied off uh, what's the word i'm looking for um reshaped you can see those marks there i wonder if they feel like anything it's not even sometimes it's when something's been pressed in a little bit you you can see the, the wood shiny and i don't know why it's like that but they're little little sail or wedge shaped shiny marks that something's pressed against it okay so here's the the challenging bit what i'm going to do is i'm going to get a little drill bit and i'm going to make a tiny mark in the end of this nut um the reason for that is that it allows me to have a purchase point um, to put a put something into to tap it out. So it's we don't we don't intend to save this um, nut. We just want to get it out cleanly. That's the main task. So I'm just gonna make a little mark in it and sort of hard for you to see from over there but right. drill 15 no higher than that thank you right so I'm going to come from this side I'm going to hold this safely here and I'm going to hold this safely here like this and I'm going to make a little mark in the nut Talk about a blunt drill, oh, blimey. Still, it put the little 
hole in there for me to drive something against it. Now what I want to do is find something that will comfortably locate in there. What we'll do? Oh, it's got bouncy. This is a spring-loaded one. So you kind of, if you have, oh, there's one. Yeah, a metal punch or something that will do the job. Um, preferably not the sprung type because that'll just bounce off. So you probably can't see it very well, but I'm holding, I'm doing this to hold the guitar safely so I know where it is and it's not going anywhere. So I'm going to just very gently have a go at drifting this out now. Okay, now that's nice. Um, came out beautifully. No splintering of anything. Um, oh, of course, it's gone and it's gone and <laughs> it's gone and done me again, isn't it? It's a curved one. I've been buying flat ones. Oh. Anyway, that's not the end of the world. Um, the other thing is, you know, it, this is plastic. Actually, it's not. It's not tusk. That's weird. I don't know what they? What is this? It may be their own Fender's own proprietary new bone type thing. It has a much more plasticky look than the than this thing here does. So we've now got a square uh, nut, a square bottomed nut. But what we can do is I will take out the little grub screws for a minute, and we can reshape it if we like. We can do whatever we want. Now I don't want to cut. I don't want to do anything to the wood of the slot. I want to keep that original, so I don't mess with that. But we've got a nut here, and we can put a curve into it. And the curve into it doesn't really do anything except make it fit a little better before our um, little feet start gripping and working. So I would, at this point, get me a, a little sharp pen. Sorry, can't see too well. And I would mark up the curve on this against this nut here like that and I would then probably go off and gently hand file this or use a dremel or something but just have a go reshaping this to something close to the originals 9.25 inch radius um, yeah let's go right and it's hardly any at all but it would be just nice to to soften out that or just smooth it out so i'm going to do it over there so let me just put this on hold for a second and i'll come back okay so <clears throat> i've slightly reshaped the nut to fit to work with the curved thing um and it's in there sitting there nice and tidy um it's, I've also made very slight indentations in a marked in line with exactly where these little grub screws go so that we've got a little footing so the grub screws uh, don't slide sideways if somebody bends the strings down there so that's all good so the next bit of this will be and you can see by the way you can take this out as and when it never gets glued in it stands on its little flattened metal feet uh, in the little tiny grooves that I've made um, which are perfectly lined up to keep it there and once we get the new strings uh, fitted then the start point the uh, at, at its lowest point the string should sit on the nut on the first fret and then we just raise it up using the tiny little hex key supplied but in the meantime the next stage of this is to um, we're going to polish out the frets and using our masking tape to do it now fenders <clears throat> not mexico particularly but some fenders uh, have presented all kinds of problems with with finish however rosewood or palafero uh, isn't a problem normally so i'm not going to worry too much about that uh, if it was a, a maple fingerboard um, i might do still it's not a bad idea to sort of um douse the oh, that's the right word douse the tape in um, in the carpet first just to take some of the stick out of it and I'll take this nut out for now because we don't need that for our polishing exercise um, but 
you know, it doesn't hurt to just take a bit of the sticky out of it anyway. It's, it's only it has to stay on the fingerboard to protect it. So we'll do that and then we'll I'll cut some smaller bits up to go all the way down the fingerboard. So we've got the whole thing uh, protected and then we'll do polish out with a series of sandpapers. And importantly, when I start that off at the 600 grit, I'm going to do some running up and down the edge. In fact, I might do a 180 or 220 grit if I've got any first. Um, but after that, it'll be 600 grit and then 1,000, then 1,500, and then through a set of micro mesh papers. Um, I'll, do so. I'll take a couple of close up picks of the original nut. Say so it's the it's ultimately the low first print action on the low E that's led me to make and use the adjustable nut. Um, I tried to go on the if it ain't broke don't fix it mentality um, because there's no there's no point if something's working well there's no point doing modifications to it and running any risk of causing any damage to it if it doesn't need it. Um, However, that low uh, first rate action on the, on the low E um, sort of tipped the scales for me, I'm thinking, right, this is, this is probably going to be worth doing because otherwise we can't do anything that. We could do one of those sort of get out of jail repairs with super glue and bone stuff. But, you know, we, the guitar's been shipped with a too low action on the first fret low E and you know you can't really improve on that other than you know you're always trying to repair so replacing it with the tusk adjustable is a better strategy than just trying to repair something that isn't great to begin with okay I'm going to put this on a bench other bench a carpeted bench to be out of the way and I'm just going to cut the uh, different size pieces that I need of the white masking tape and uh, I'll come back when that sanding process is done and I'll restring and then we'll fine tune the nut and then we'll be pretty much good. Dokey, are we recording? Yes we are. Right. So all of the leveling, polishing done and now we're in the cleaning the, or oiling the fingerboard and yeah, final stages and then I'm going to Put the new springs on. We'll tweak the get the boiler up here. Come on. We'll tweak the uh, nut um, into its target action. Um, if it needs any more sanding down to adjust it, then I'll do that. But I don't think it will. I think we're just about exactly where it should be. Um, the beauty of the adjustable nut is first, first of all. And like the one that was in there, we haven't had to cut the nut slots down into it to make to get it to the right first fret action. Um, that means that we are working with factory generated, machine generated slots, which as a result should be um, smoother and you know, far less likely to create any friction. Um, the second good thing about it is, is that we're bringing, because we're bringing the strings up to the action we want rather than cutting down into a nut to get the action we want. Um, it means that uh, you can set it, try it out, and if you need to tweak it, you can tweak it by a tiny amount. If, if you cut the slots into the um, nut and that's how you get your first fret action, then um, you don't have that adjustability. It means if you wanted to play slide, for example, you could raise the nut higher and keep the strings higher off the deck. If you wanted to, um, if you put on different gauge strings, heavier gauge strings, uh, and you wanted to tweak the height of the first fret, you can also do that now. So, so it's a great thing. I, like I said, I just, especially when a guitar is new and you know it's got beautifully fitted in, uh, I, I'm nervous or I, I tend to try and see first whether we can work on the it ain't broke don't fix it um, principle you know not if it's perfectly good don't replace it but like you saw in this case it was by default it was a fraction too low and it was causing that tiny bit of string or fret slap so it had to go in the end uh, which is fine because that's what 
we'd agreed on anyway that we would have an adjustable but sometimes we make that agreement and then I kind of look at what we were working with on the actual guitar and if, if the fit is so great and it's beautifully finished over and so on sometimes and, and providing the existing nut is we, we've room to adjust it and it's perfect and you know and sometimes I might recommend that it, we don't take it out um, because there's always a degree you know a small degree of uh, traces that you'll leave you know when you take the you break the sometimes it's really thick um, poly finish or, or nitro finish and if you take the nut out you have to basically cut into that and you know no matter how you try you, you won't replicate that finish without refinishing the guitar and you know that's obviously a way big job just for replacing a, a nut you know so it's, a, it's the kind of thing that I, I just if it really genuinely isn't broke I'll recommend not fixing it um, but in this case I think it turned out the right decision because uh, that first track action was a tad too low as, as def starting out too low as default really okay so I'm going to now load up the uh, load up the strings um, at this end there was a they sent out of the factory, it was a bit too much wound on, so they were kind of piling on quite a bit of windings on the, on the tuner heads. So, the simple way, oh, by the way, when you're, when you're, um, as a point, when you're stringing with the adjustable nut, because the adjustable nut is loose, I always recommend you start with the D to hold the nut down, D and the G and then the others. Um, so if you think inwards, outwards, okay, so make sure that's in place. Now, I'm going to put this on. It may be that we still need to remove a bit of material off this nut, and I'm not entirely sure if it's low enough yet. But that'll be fine. We'll, we'll just get this in place now. And then we'll have a look. That, that might be uh, spot on, but I do like to have a bit, of, a bit of adjustment room available to me. That might still need a little bit taking out. I'm going to do that before we go any further. Get rid of these. Um, so it's going to take a little bit more sanding on the underside of the nut. Um, okay, I want it. I want it to sit lower. We've, we've got the we've got the, um, the grub screws wound all the way in, so they're not holding it out in any way. So I'm just going to dial those out of the way for a second, and then we're going to get our sandy paper. And just take some away. And could, if you're feeling like it, you could, if you were doing this, you could use a go to the Dremel and get some. It's very difficult to hold this thing, it's very small and fiddly. But I want some removed from the end here and lower it. And then this end as well. Move it out. Yeah, it's really not not a lot to hang on to when you're doing this. And all that's happening is that the end of the nut is um, sitting on the just touching on the uh, slot, so we still have just that little bit to take away, so we can have it sitting a little bit lower to begin with. get there it's just a little it's a fine tuning process well, it's not the most entertaining uh, video <laughs> content ever I'm just trying to keep the, the shape of the 
square shape of the nut and lower it at the same time. Okay, and get that gray gradient radius into it. the string and I'll be happy. It's so close to being there. But I want it touching the string. Wink. Right. Mm -hmm. Slight grip. Right. This should be starting in the right place, touching the ball. In you go. Oh, a fraction more. Just a patience we need, that's all. So close to the marks, so let's call that a goer. I'll double check with this one, but I think we're pretty much there. So I pull the string through taut, then I pull it back one fret, wind it on, push the tight string over the loose string on the way through, and then pull up the loose string and push the held tight string under the loose string the second time around. And that sort of makes a, makes a neat little locking thing without doing going through any of that horrible business where people uh, deliberately tie knots in their strings which always ends up with me with blood on my fingers and if they're really unlucky scratches on their headstock because they're possible to get undone sometimes so one fret's worth back first time hold the tight one and make it go over the uh, loose string, second time round, make it go under the loose string. Now this nut, the way it's standing right now, is just below where it should be, so it's fine, we can now dial up from here, and that's perfectly okay. Sometimes when I'm doing the Les Paul style ones, I do like them to start on the, actually touching the first fret, as my start point, my default point, and then I lift them up from there. 
Um, but in this case, this is pretty much spot on. It, it, will, it will need to go up from here, which is really what we want. That's fine. So, and there's no rule that says it has to, the spring has to touch the first fret. It's just when I, when I get it there, I know that it's in the right place to um, really full range of upward movement. There's never going to be a point where you want to take it down below the height of the uh, string touching the first fret, obviously. That's never going to be an option. Okay, there we go. So the next thing on the list, once you've really strung the guitar, and this is with nine to remember, um, is we're going to stretch out the strings. And then we're going to, once they're stretched out and we think we've got tuning stability, uh, going to intonate the, uh, each string individually. Okay. So while I'm here, I'm going to, have I lost my, no, no, where are they? I had them here somewhere, over here. Let's snip off the excess. This very short length, so nobody gets stung by the string wasps, which is a horrible experience. Shorter these can be, the better. Okay, so strings on, nice, smooth, softer, much, much softer fingerboard uh, fret ends as well, by the way. Okay, so some big pulls to begin with to uh, just settle the strings, and um, these are a bit over tight, and I'll slack them in a minute, but just big, hefty pulls to get them seated happily. Um, obviously as you get thinner a greater risk of snapping them so careful um, we'll tune them to start now obviously it's rattling Adjusting. Let's just check if this is if this is over 0.3.4, then I'm going to take it off and do the final tweak. Um, let me just find where we are. Let's try it. If it's more than 0.3, we still haven't got it set right. Yeah. So this, I'm going to undo this. Let's just have a quick look. Yeah, 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 yeah. Too high, too high, too high. We need to seat it down a bit further. So, drop these off. Kind of a bit more shaping. Uh, it's a little bit difficult with, or more time consuming as you can see with these curved bottomed ones. Um, it, 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 I, usually, it's, I'm working with the, um, what's the word, the flat bottomed or often in the case of the the Les Paul style ones so um, they, they tend to be easier to get down to the right height so I'm just going to line this one up and just see okay all right so we need I think we need just to exaggerate, exaggerate that curve a little bit to get it to sit better I'll mark it up again just to be on the safe side and we'll take these grub screws out. So I just want to get this absolutely right. There's no point putting in the adjustable nut if we start with one of the strings slightly higher than we actually wanted it. Um, I think my very, very sharp pencil won't help us in this respect.
Okay. So there's the there's the shape. So we, we need a bit bit out the middle. I'm just going to use the thingy for this. Accentuating that curve in the middle now a little bit that we did it before. It should be what we need. Let's put this in and see where it sits. Line up, please. Line up, please. Okay. Do them up first, and then we'll see where we go. Okay, it's still a little high on that side, so we definitely don't want it that way. See if we can get it to sit right. There we go. Very close, but not quite. This travel end seems to be too tall for some reason. sit down where you're supposed to. So practically, virtually on the deck there. So a tiny bit more I think and we'll be alright. like this um, unfortunately
lovely. They're at least they're always very fine, these little curved nuts anyway, at the best of times. But particularly when they're designed to be adjustable, they're even finer. I think that should be it. Okay, well, get in, get on and get out. That was a D. And we're on the we're on the deck. Good. Oops. Going properly. And we're on the deck. Good. Fine. Let's do what we want to do here. Good. Now, reinsert our little hex grub screw. Very carefully get it in place. And then we just lift up as far as we need and no more. We'll get there. Good. <laughs> Sorry about that long-winded thing. Interested in these things, they may, may need a tiny, tiny bit of adjustment because I have a feeling. I have a feeling that I wonder if these are actually 9.5 radius nuts. They should be the tusk. That's interesting, isn't it? Not quite right, Mr. Tusk. We need to make an adjustment on one or two of them. It's not what we expect. Three on the others, three, five, let's get four, make sure we don't go below four, wherever it's gone. Thank you. 
Guess that's this and hikes and whatnot. Too tall, man, too tall. You are too tall. Tuning, well, keep on tuning that. So, for stretching, grab hold of the strings and give them a good thumb and forefinger stretch. Get rid of all of this slack so we don't have any detuning going on. Tune up again. Stretch them again, as before. Now, if um, over time, if there's any compression of the uh, grub screws in the rosewood or the plow ferro or the whatever that stuff is, um, Tatoba, then all you have to do is just dial the screws down a bit and lift the, the nut fractionally higher. It's very simple. My experience is the amount of compression is tiny. We're getting close to tuning stability now. Very nice. So we need to check the intonation, which we will do with a cheap lead for the purposes of ease of grabbing hold of and then, and then we will use our cold tuner and we'll open them in the hole and then we will make any adjustments kind of would expect this to be right from the factory no reason why it shouldn't be. Um, let's just support the neck there. sharp too short in fact there's not much not actually much dialed in there looking at this so it hasn't really been adjusted in the factory so we'll pull these little the saddle back a bit and we'll pull the G back a bit as well because that's going to be sharp Slack all of these off for a minute because we'll do a little bit of movement for the other ones. It's easier when it's not under tension. So I'm following the standard intonation pattern here, first of all, and then sort of doing it by eye to begin with. Mm. 
it should sort of end up around about there. you slacken the strings off a bit you need to stretch them out a little bit again just to make sure you bed on the strings onto the pegs once more A fraction still friction too long. Let's try that. These need to come back a bit. G and then G very slightly as well. Okay.
Okay, there we have it. That is as, as low as this guitar wants to go. Um, it's an interesting one, 9.5. It'll kind of stop and where, it, where it doesn't want to go any further. It's little bits of finish, tiny little, tiny little balls. I don't know what you call them, little beads of finish here and there. Um, weird. Uh, yeah, so it, it has a limit to where it wants to go. Um, and we can't, we can, we can get us to about, well, as like I say, as low as a, a 9.5 comfortably would go. Uh, I've leveled it for that. And, um, you know, if, it, if, if your playing style is harder hitting than that, then I recommend you increase either the action at this end um, by a fraction or increase the relief a tiny bit more to give you a little bit more room for the strings to spin. As it happens, it's quite, there's quite a lot there. And that's playing, that's playing well and you can hit it quite hard as well. So it's not the lowest guitar I've ever set up, but then 9.5 tellies never are, that's the thing. Um, so it's gone as, it's as low as I can get it um, at about, what are we at? 1.6, something like that on the last low E. 1.5, just over 1.5. It's actually, actually, it's not that bad. 1.6, 1.2, 1.3. So it actually it is right down there with some of the, you know, some of the lower ones. But, um, you know, it, it's designed, I've set it up now so that uh, go up from there if anything. I'm going to take this, this bit of plastic off because it's just in the way of the strings and it will do nothing other than annoy you when you get the guitar. Okay, so that's that done. First setup of 2021. Um, hopefully many more to come. Uh, intonated, new strings, only ball nines, adjustable, custom adjustable tusk nut, uh, tusk string tree to get rid of that horrible butterfly thing. Um, Nice, let's put the angle about the same as the G and the D, which is absolutely fine. Or a little bit lower than the G, but absolutely fine. So there we are, ready to go. I'll sit this in the bag at home over the weekend, double check it. Um, what comes with it, of course, is the little a tiny hex key, which is part of the, or how you adjust the nut. So I'm gonna stick it on the cellophane on here, which you're gonna to wanna to take off anyway. So there's the little, key that goes with it for the nut. Um, I also include the nut and the string tree in case you want to reuse those. They are reusable actually, even there's a tiny little dent on the nut there where I made a dent for uh, tapping it out, but I'll include those anyway so you can go back to a conventional nut. Nothing about the slot has changed. That would fit right back in, albeit you might want to shim it because that, that bottom one is too low as we've discussed. So I'm going to attach that to there as well with the, the famous green tape. So that's the that's the whole thing. There we go. Beautiful. Thanks for watching. Um, over the year, I'm hoping to get some more exciting camera angles than this. I'm afraid this is a bit dreary. Uh, better quality, much better quality, as you can see. If I free this up from here a minute.